Let's take a look at how to put a contact form on your website here on Wix. So if I'm gonna add a contact form here to the right of this map on the contact page, I would go to add elements, the plus icon in your toolbar. About halfway down, you can see contact and forms. Now there's a lot of different forms that you can add, including the maps that we actually added here. But up at the top, the very first one is contact. Now we have some options here. We'll be able to customize them, but if one of these looks like a good starting point for you, like this one here, I'm gonna grab and just drag and drop onto my page. Now it's a little bit large at first, so I'm gonna fit the upper left hand corner and maybe scale this box down a little bit. And we can just adjust the design of this to fit our location that we're trying to put it at. So we can grab the contact us and we can go to edit text and we can bring down the font size a little bit. We can also select a part of our theme. So if we want it to be like heading six, which is much smaller, we could do that very easily just like that. Now all of these individual elements inside of the form can be moved around. So you can bring these up and sort of scale them or skew them in, you know, change the padding, change the width and height and all of that just by clicking on your elements and dragging on the edges. So we'll just continue to bring these up and kind of match them all together. We've got write a message down here. And you can see how we're getting this all fit into place. Now if you want to expand your section a little bit, you can click on your section and there's going to be a little toggle down here in which you can push the next section down some. So if we wanted to push that down just a little bit so we can get this submit button lined up, and of course the success message would show up after people submit. There we go, we've sort of tweaked this contact form's size to fit the space that we had here. Now of course we can bring in the bounding box since it doesn't need to be as large anymore. And now you can see this form fitting right in. Now what can we do with this form? Well we have form settings, we can add new fields, and we can, of course, change all the elements and the layout and that's designed. Let's just take this one at a time and look at the form settings. Instead of the main section of the form settings, you can view the submissions table. So this is essentially anyone who's submitted, you can go and view the actual submissions to the form. So that's going to take you to the back end of your website. On the left hand side, you see communications and then forms and submissions. This is going to be your table of all the submissions, and you can see that all the elements line up here. When was it submitted, first name, last name, email, and the message that they wrote. So if we exit out of this, you can see that matches up with all of our fields, first name, last name, email, and the message that they wrote. Next up, we have some settings, so you can change the name of the form, which really only shows up back in the forms section on the back end of your website so you can keep track of these forms and then you can change a lot of the form settings like email notifications you can set those and where they're going to send those notifications to so like when someone submits will you get notified and what email should we send that notification to submission table we looked at that is there a submission limit or a deadline to this form is there any info that should be filled automatically and then should there be a subscriber double opt-in? So like sending subscribers a verification email, there's certain rules, guidelines, laws around that. Uh, usually that's something you need to do if you're collecting emails, for instance. But if they're not really subscribing to something, it might not be something you need to do. You have the submit message. If we click on that, you can see here, thanks for submitting. Uh, we could just say success and then change that message. When vis visitors submit the form, do they go to a certain page? So you can send them to a page after they submit. Do they link to an external URL, show a file to download, or just a success message? How long does it show? Does it show for a certain amount of time, like eight seconds, or just always after the submission? There are payment options. You can see also that success message changed there. Does your form accept payments? This is just a contact form, but we're kind of going through it. Uh, are there any conditions on this form? 
which fields will you save to contacts when visitors submit this form? Are there any automations? What's the email marketing uh, campaigns here that you could send? And then of course there's some support down here. So that's in the main settings. We can also add new fields to our form. So these are basic contact fields, basic fields, advanced fields. So inside of contact, you can see if you wanted to add a phone number, you could do that. And if you wanted to, you could shrink some of these this form size. So I can match the email to the first name, and then I could take the phone and drag it up here and put it into this spot here. So now phone is next to email. Let's go back to add to new fields. So there's a lot of different fields that you can add here, especially from a contact standpoint. There's also basic fields. So if you just wanted a short answer field, a long answer field, and you can edit what those fields are asking to be submitted as well. There are some advanced fields and some anti-spam fields too. Now let's get into the elements. So the elements here are the same thing kind of as add new field. You can see how it shows a check mark next to the ones that are added already. But then we have layout. So you can adjust the form layout. So how much padding is there in the field title? How much space between the field and the title? So some of these things you can adjust without having to come out here and drag around the items. How are the text elements aligned? Does the field title just align to the center of the actual field itself or to the left or right? What about the placeholder padding? So for instance, this detail down here where you have placeholder text, how does that appear within the actual field? Now let's go back before we get into editing fields. We'll go back to that layout, take a look at any more options. We also have one column versus two columns, spacing between rows and spacing between columns. So of course you can drag them around, but you can also make some tweaks to the whole form here on the form layout. And we also have design. So we have a few options here that we could click on as far as just templates for the design of the form. We can also customize the design. So you can go to the input fields, customize the regular, the hover of that input field, whether you're focused on it, it's so like when you're clicked on it, when someone's inputting data or if there's an error with it. So like when there's an error and maybe something was necessary or required, which we'll get to that, it will show up in red. So you have all these different states of the input fields that you can adjust. And of course you have your standard design elements here, fill color of the background of the field, the opacity of that color, whether the field has a border. You can see how the borders on the bottom, we could change it to all sides, for instance. And of course, a quick way to change the look of your form was to go to some of these templates because you can see like this one, for instance, has that border around all sides, but you don't have to select those. You can come in here, change the input fields. You can adjust what the submit button looks like. You have all your settings here. There's also a hover setting for that. And then the form background, just in general, the border, the fill color, if there's shadows, the corners of it. So you can really make some tweaks here to make this form designed the way that you want it designed. Now let's take a look at actually editing these input fields. So if we select an input field, you can see we have similar options too. So we were editing just the whole form, but we have the field as well we can edit. And when we edit this, we can adjust what type of field it is. Is it text, password, are they entering a number? Is this their email? So we could say text for this one, it's just their name, right? And then we could say first name, we could capitalize name if we wanted to, depending on how you want your form to look. Or you could like delete this out if you don't even want to show any text there. And then maybe you just want to show the placeholder text of first name, right? So we could put first name there and then just hide this. And so now the placeholder text is the only thing that shows. That's an option too, just showing you how you can change around the way that your form looks and the way that your form functions. Now you have a few initial text options here. So like default would be enter initial text or default and then placeholder or just none. 
and then validation. So is it required? If we click on this, then it is required. Is it a read only? It's not really a field that they can write in. You can check mark that as well. You can set a character limit. So you could set a character limit like on first name and stuff that might help with your design so they don't break your design as they write too long. And then also adding pattern valid validation if you need that as well. So we can edit that field. We can look at some of the advanced settings of that field, whether there's conditional rules, the name of this field in submissions. So when you go look at your submissions, what's the name of that field? And also connecting this form to your contact list uh, to a specific spot in your contact list, or you don't save it at all to your contact list. So you could choose only to keep, for instance, first names and not last names in your contact list. Now there's of course all the different layout options and design options to this field. So you can edit these fields and their design individually. You can edit the animation of them. Maybe you wanted all these fields to animate in. You could do that as well. You can see down here it said, oh, you designed one text field. Do you want to design all the input fields together? So you could go to that regular form section and design them all, but this would be how to change the design of like one specifically if you wanted to. So you can click around your whole form, you know, for instance, this phone field that we added came with placeholder text. Maybe I don't want that placeholder text in there. Uh, when you customize your design, you can see the different options here. Like we've been there, done that a little bit, but um, if I didn't want that placeholder text, go to edit, go to none on placeholder text, and then there's no, no placeholder text on this phone field. And so if we take a look at how this form functions. I'm not sure if submission will, will work correctly on our website or not. There we go. We can drag this over so it lines up a little better uh, with just a sample site, but we're going to preview it and we're going to type in here and we're going to type me in here and just a fake email and a fake phone number and hello. <laughs> spell that wrong and we're going to submit that form so it says that a part of it oh because i put in a symbol here i accidentally typed a semicolon you can see the error popped up so we'll delete that and we can submit and it couldn't submit the form due to a temporary issue so that's because it's our site's not really linked up they can't forms can't be submitted I'm, i've just got the free templated site but if you had your actual web hosting and such and your site was published, then it would go to your submissions form. My site's not in a state that it can accept submissions, but you can see how that would be submitted. And that is how you can add a contact form and edit all the different parts and pieces to it here on Wix.